five-minute Advent podcast based on the writings of Don Prosper Garage, The Mystery of Advent Continued. But this annual visit of the spouse of the church does not content the church. She aspires after a third coming of Christ, which will complete all things by opening the gates of eternity. She has caught up the last words of her spouse, Surely I am coming quickly. And she cries out to him, Ah, Lord Jesus, come. She is impatient to be loosed from her present temporal state. She longs for the number of the elect to be filled up and to see appear in the clouds of heaven the sign of her deliverer and her spouse. Her desires expressed by her Advent liturgy go even as far as this. And here we have the explanation of these words of the beloved disciple and his prophecy. The nuptials of the Lamb are come, and his wife hath prepared herself. But the day of this last coming to her will be a day of terror. The church frequently trembles at the very thought of that awful judgment in which all mankind is to be tried. She calls it a day of wrath, on which, as David and the Sibyl have foretold, the world will be reduced to ashes, a day of weeping and of fear. Not that she fears for herself, since she knows that this day will be forever secure for her the crown as being the bride of Jesus, but her maternal heart is troubled at the thought that on that same day, so many of her children will be on the left hand of the judge, and having no share with the elect, will be bound hand and foot and cast into the darkness, where there shall be everlasting weeping and gnashing of teeth. This is the reason why the church in the liturgy of Advent so frequently speaks of the coming of Christ as a terrible coming, and selects from the scriptures those passages which are most calculated to awaken a salutary fear in the mind of such of her children as may be sleeping the sleep of sin. This, then, is the threefold mystery of Advent. The liturgical forms in which it is embodied are of two kinds. The one consists of prayer, passages from the Bible, and similar formulas, in all of which words themselves are employed to convey the sentiments which we have been explaining. The other consists of external rites, peculiar to this holy time, which by speaking to the outward senses, complete the expressiveness of the chants and words. First of all, there is the number of days of Advent. Forty was the number originally adopted by the Church, and is still maintained in the Ambrosian Liturgy and in the Eastern Church. If at a later period the Church of Rome and those which follow her liturgy have changed the number of days, the same idea is still expressed in the four weeks, which have been substituted for the forty days. The new birth of our Redeemer takes place after four weeks, as the first nativity happened after four thousand years according to the Hebrew and Vulgate chronology. As in Lent, so likewise during Advent, marriage is not solemnized or celebrated, lest worldly joy should distract Christians from their those serious thoughts wherewith the, the expected coming of the sovereign judge ought to inspire them, or from that dearly cherished hope which the friends of the bridegroom have of being soon called to the eternal nuptial feast. The people are forcefully reminded of the sadness which fills the heart of the church by the somber color of the vestments. Excepting the feast of the saints, purple is the color she uses. The deacon does not wear the dogmatic, or the subdeacon the tunical. Formerly it was the custom in some places to wear black vestments. This mourning of the church shows how fully she unites herself with those true Israelites of old, who clothed in sackcloth and ashes waited for the Messiah, and bewailed Zion that she had not her beauty. And Judah, the scepter had been taken from him, till he should come, who is to be sent, the expectation of nations. It also signifies the works of penance, whereby she prepares for the second coming, full as it is of the sweetness and mystery, which is realized in the souls of men, in proportion as they appreciate the tender love of the divine guest, who has said, My delights are to be with the children of men. It expresses thirdly the desolation of this bride who yearns after her beloved who is long a coming. Like the turtle dove, she moans her loneliness, longing for the voice which will say to her, Come from Labinus, my bride, come thou shalt be crowned, thou hast wounded my heart. The church also during Advent, expecting on the feast of saints, suppresses the angelic canticle, Gloria and Excelsis Deo, for this glorious song was sung at Bethlehem over the crib of the divine babe. The tongues of the angels are not loosened yet. The virgin has not yet brought forth her divine treasure. It is not yet time to sing. It is not even true to say, Glory be to God in the highest, and peace on earth to men of goodwill. Join us tomorrow for our five-minute 
Advent Podcast. God bless.